How many comic books do you own? <laughs> Okay, let's put it like this. Um, how many comic books do I own? I own 20 bookshelves of graphic novels. <laughs> I think I might open a library one day. So I was born in 1981 on the south end of Columbus, so born and raised. Now that I reflect back on it, I grew up really poor. When you say it, it sounds pretty triggering, but actually I learned a lot. That's how I like figured out how to do art through like a grassroots process. Like I signed up for art classes at Schiller Park. That's when I discovered and understood that I was gonna be an artist. After that, it was more just like drawing, drawing, drawing. So just nonstop, just obsessed with it. So when I was like 10 or 11, that's when I discovered comic books. And then that's when it shifted. So then I was just drawing comics all the time. The current project I just finished up and that I'm still working on a little bit here and there is a comic book called Eightfold Path. It's a 225 page comic. The turnaround time for the book was six months. So it was a team of us, about six to eight people just working around the clock on this book. I'm the beginning and the end of it, which means that I approve what goes through and what doesn't. So it's almost as like a director. The idea of converting a script into a comic book is actually a very difficult process. You start with penciling, um, we go through this process called thumbnailing, which is where you just literally sketch out the idea. And then after that, you go into like your official pencil, which is like where you're like, okay, this works. Now let's do the paneling and actually draw it in pencil and make that work. After that, we ink it. The inking part's kind of like the fun. It's kind of like the jazz of it. And then after that, we scan it in digitally color it. Now make this into this Hitchcockian like masterpiece comic. They're like, all right, uh, we build it while we fly. So another project that I worked on that was super awesome, super epic, a dream come true. White Castle and Coca-Cola called me and was like, uh, would you like to do the art for the 100th anniversary? Would you be interested in designing a cup? And I was like, yeah. And then I was like, we should do like three cups. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a collector thing. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I always wanted to design something like this. And even from when I was a kid, because what I really have a lot of passion about is actually like making products cool. And so we developed a narrative from, from the beginning and the original uh, Billy Ingram, the founder. It shows like the diner, the first location, um, what the first gift card looks like. So yeah, this is all my narrative, all my storytelling I came up with. And then obviously me there at the end as any great Renaissance painter would do, which is include themselves into <laughs> the masterpiece. <laughs> so yeah, so if you get a chance, look for those cups online, you know? <laughs>
We end up calling the mural the People's Mural because of how the community got behind it. The process for the People's Mural was to show Hanif as a mosaic. The reason I wanted to really inject a lot of color in it has more to do with the quote. There is something about setting eyes on the people who hold you up instead of simply imagining them. The idea of this is where the characters in the background, and these are people that are in the community too. I put them all in black and white. And I put Hanif in color because we realize as artists that we're like isolated in the sense we think we're isolated and it's actually not the case. We actually have people who support us and that care. But just going through that process, you get kind of lost and it's pretty exhausting. So it has a lot of personal meaning when I designed this. So in the summer of 2020, I moved into Amina Robinson's home uh, through the Columbus Museum of Art. Now what I served as was as the manager, but there's kind of like a duality to it, which was that Amina Robinson was my mentor. I met Amina Robinson when I started at the Columbus Museum of Art in May of 2001. So it had a, like a higher purpose for me. It's a curated museum space, so you're essentially inside Amina Robinson. The spirit's definitely there, the energy's there. It was probably the least art productive I was, but the most healing process I've had. I was able to slow down and like actually like <sighs> relax, you know, because of the residency, not having to worry about, you know, the finances and stuff like that. It's the only space where I can like really like fly, where I can like just like do whatever I want in it, you know, it's like a healing space I would say. The one thing Amina said to me that still resonates with me today is keep drawing, don't stop drawing. And at the time I'm like, don't tell me that, I draw all the time, like that's absurd, I'll never stop drawing. But then what happens is that life happens. <laughs> life occurs and then you get older and drawing becomes harder. So that message, just like keep drawing, has more importance to me now than when she told me that when I was 22 years old, you know? I mean, but that's just like a master teacher, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so that's pretty cool.